Hi again, everyone. I'm Ollie Matthews. This is The Narcissistic Resistance, and this resistance video is sponsored by contribution from Jake, and here's his story. Hi, Ollie. You can use my name or not, I guess. It really doesn't matter. This could be a public video. Here it goes. I've come to realize my mother grew me like a pedophile since I was a child to be her son husband. My mother was the primary abuser, it turns out. My father was a closet queer sociopath who really couldn't be bothered to be a real man to his children. Had to make it about himself and how awesome and tough he was. And I know what that's like, Jake. I mean, very, very similar, very similar experiences, nearly identical. His wife, my mother, would always get mad and maybe a lesser degree, me, my brother, to blame this man. Lord knows there was enough to blame. So in the end, she would just be encouraging everyone to be miserable and not be close so she could be the spider in the middle of the family dictating communication. Very sophisticated, covert, and sadistic. Yeah, and that's the difference between, like, your mother and my mother. My mother had no control over her emotions whatsoever. She can't be covert or sophisticated because it's just all out there all the time. She has no filter ever, ever. But you see her as the spider controlling the web. You know, and that's really... A, a good way to describe the mother creating the son who needs the son husband. They sit in that, they're that spider just sitting in the middle of that web and they control everybody and everything in it. When I was growing up, I would be left alone for days until they wanted a scapegoat. At that point, I would, I would be cornered in a room and screamed at for hours. After they calmed down, they would explain why this was my fault, shame me for their behavior, then buy me some cheap shit that children shouldn't even be using anyway. You know, similar patterns again, you know. The, the, the tag team berating from a very young age and you don't even know why and then you got to be stood there and put on trial and then told why you're a piece of shit, you know. I never even got cheap shit after that it's, as a makeup. It was just like, okay, we've established you're a piece of shit. Go. That was it. That's all they needed from, from me. Fast forward to my mid-20s and I'm so crippled I can't walk. My joints are prematurely degenerating. I'm a hunchback, stuttering, isolated freak. And they still wanted more narcissistic supply. When my parents fed you, you could feel the sexual elation in their sadism. Beating me down physically, emotionally, spiritually, socially, and sexually was like a competitive sport for these people. And you could see that sometimes. You could see the teamwork between them at a very young age. And I, I specifically remember sitting there at the kitchen table because of my parents' house you know, they had a full kitchen and then there was a like an alcove to the kitchen. And then when an arc, that's where the kitchen table was. There was a TV. I sat with my back to the, the wall. Okay? So my mother, if you're looking at me, you'd be looking at me like how my mother looks at me. From across the... This is how I grew up. Okay? From across the table. And I wonder. Um, and this is a good question for you guys. What was the seating arrangement like in, in, in your narcissistic house? Because in mine, <clears throat> so my back's to the wall. She's right ahead, uh, across from me. So as you're looking at me, that's my mother constantly. It's why, because I was always in her direct gaze. I was always in her direct gaze. That's why I always thought she was the main problem, because she was so overtly abusive meat to the left precious to the right circle my back to the wall if something were to happen if there was a fire 
then they had to go to the door. There was an emergency and they had to get to the door. I'm the last one to get out. Wow. I mean, I've talked about how I know you're always put in last place, but there it is. I would wonder where else that might fall with you guys. But because my mother was always in my direct line of sight, and because they're there, that that fucking gaze, that those looks, I know, man, I know those looks, that sexualized bullshit, I know it. <sighs> But he was the controller to the left, just out of my sight, but right there. And the three of them would work together. And, and my back's to the wall. I'm trapped. They're all right next to the arch. I'm behind the table. So I got to either get around my father or my brother's chair or... But you could see at that table where the competition came in. And that's where this all started. You can see them working together subconsciously. It's not even like, you know. And that's what maddens you. And that brought to it what brings like that rage in us to this day. Like, God, you manipulative motherfuckers. You manipulative, lying, to this day, lying motherfuckers. That's the I know what you're doing. You know what you're doing. You know that I know that you know that I know what you're doing. Drive you insane. I had to call them on their shit because they were killing me. After completely fucking, fucking me up, my mother overplayed her hand. She became extremely overtly sexually aggressive with me. She thought that no one would believe me. She thought I couldn't stand up for myself. I mean, why should she stop if she got away with it for most for almost three decades, right? This sicko was hiding behind the good mother card as she did everything in her power to emasculate, cripple, and bully and gaslight me into nothing. My uncle, mother's brother, was sexually molested by his mother, my grandmother. Grandmama's... Grandmama's excuse was he was constipated and needed an animal. God, they love playing with our assholes. Maybe, maybe they're just failed proctologists. Maybe that's what happens. Who the fuck knows? Or need, or needed to play with his balls to make sure. They were all right. Oh my! That 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 grab, and the noise, the squeal my mother would make. <sighs> it's one of the reasons I can't go back. My mother completely just badmouthed him and tried to cover it up. No wonder. It was another immigrant German cult out of the Nazi era. The hardest thing for me was to wrap to wrap my mind around is that this was absolutely intentional and planned, albeit perhaps unconsciously, over decades. My parents wanted me to be their caregiver while completely ruining my life and health. Every time I limped, screamed agony, stuttered, winced in pain, was isolated, was humiliated, they fucking gloated. Most of my identity is gone probably because it was built on emotional de dysregulation and gaslighting. I feel like an empty ghost. Years and years of the slurping up of my humanity has made me a shell. I have seen shadow people a lot of my life. I feel... 
that I that it was a friendly warning from hell that if I go to where they have dominion or become like them, it's my own fault. The willpower bit. <clears throat> a new life for myself is emerging and a sense of self from the understanding. I always said I would never be a child abuser. That's been the biggest anchor of sanity in my life. Maybe the best bet to live in our collapsing society and broken families is to live your life in truth, hand to God, because lying about any of it or covering it up will make a monster out of me. Good job on calling Weinstein. <clears throat> We do this. We talk about this. We expose it. To avoid becoming monsters. We all have it in us. How could you not? Look at what raised us. Look at what you've been exposed to. We choose against it. But that's why we're here and it's not easy. That's the whole point, Jake, is, you know, we got to live our life with a hand out to God or whatever you, you want, to something better, to light, to, to a future. And to do that, you have to be honest. And we have to be honest more than anyone because we are susceptible to this bullshit. Because what else did we know? What else? Look at what raised us. Not just you and me, but, but, but thousands of people who are on this channel. You're not alone. I get it. I get it. I, I, I've Skyped with Jake, and Jake's been around for a while. Jake's a solid, solid dude. You got to get out of there, man. You have to. You know, we talked about how you were going to get out of there, and I, I, I hope you're still moving forward with that. Okay. You're too smart and you're too good because you don't want to be this to not keep fighting to get out. So I appreciate it. And I know what I know what this was about. I know what this letter was about with it. And um, that's what this is about is you're not becoming a monster. That's. That's what this channel is about for a lot of us is just not, we're not them. We're different. We're better. So thank you again, Jake, for another uh, contribution, another story. I, I really hope this helps. Thank you to everybody watching. Please leave any opinions or advice in the comment section below. And again, if you want your story read on the channel, you have a topic you'd like me to cover, a narcissist you'd like to expose, you'd like to set up Skype, phone call, have a private, vi uh, private video made or a Facebook live chat, or you'd like to sponsor a video just like this for someone who needs help and can't afford it, or you just want to make a contribution and help the channel grow, succeed, survive, because this channel survives 100% on contributions from all of you. Without you, this all goes away. So if you like what you see here and you want to see more videos like this, you know what to do with the PayPal and email links in the description box. Also, please like and share this video wherever you can. Subscribe to my channel if you hadn't. And, and uh, click the subscription bell to be notified of all my video uploads. That one got to me a little. I'm Ollie Matthews. This has been The Narcissistic Resistance. Take